Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, these are today's instructions for the interpretation services into Spanish. There will be simultaneous English Spanish and Spanish English interpretation provided throughout the workshop. Please select the language you would like to follow the workshop in from the interpretation menu at the bottom right hand side of your Zoom screen. So please first locate the interpretation icon, select English, and then select mute original audio. Now I will make this same presentation, but in Spanish. Muy buenas tardes a todos a nuestra eh, reunión de hoy. A continuación les eh, brindaré instrucciones de cómo escuchar esta presentación en español que habrá a lo largo de todo el taller de español a inglés y de inglés al español. Por favor, seleccione el idioma en el que prefiera seguir el taller, eh, lo cual lo podrá hacer en el menú de interpretación en la parte inferior derecha de su pantalla en Zoom. Una vez que haya localizado el icono, que es el globo terráqueo, seleccione su canal. O sea, en, si lo tiene en inglés, va a decir Spanish, o sea, español. Y luego seleccione Mute Original Audio, o Mute Original Audio, para así silenciar eh, la segunda voz y solamente escuchar a la voz del intérprete. Muchas gracias. Emily, the floor is yours. Uh, Yvonne, actually. Thank you. Sorry. And so for Zoom instructions, if you would like to speak during public comment, please use the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen. When it is your turn to speak, a panelist will provide speaking access. You will receive a notification to unmute yourself. At that point, please unmute your microphone and proceed with your comment. After you have provided your comment, your speaking capabilities will be disabled. Thank you. All right, um, it is Wednesday, September 1st. I'm officially calling this meeting of Sonoma County Advisory Redistricting Commission to order. Welcome everyone and welcome commissioners. Um, welcome for members of the public who are tuning in. Um, commissioners, thank you as always for your commitment to this very important process. Um, today's meeting is a training, um, a sort of study session and um, so I'm hoping that we commissioners and the public can keep our um, focus and questions and comments um, on the mapping tools that are going to be presented to us. Um, before we get underway, I do want to, as I've done uh, in previous meetings, to reaffirm to commissioners and to the public that the Board of Supervisors appointed this commission to advise and assist them with redrawing our district boundaries. Um, it's been um, said at all of our meetings um, that we've had that we, the commissioners have been selected by the supervisors because of our connectedness with the community. And I wanna reaffirm that as well. Our objective is to oversee a public process um, that's inclusive. And um, this inclusive process will allow us um, to develop district boundaries that respect our neighborhoods, our demographics, our history, our geography, um, and our community. Um, so I, I, I want to ground us um, in our meetings um, with that in, as the focus. Um, one last thing I want to say before we start the training um, is that I will have to leave the meeting. I have a commitment at 515 and Vice Chair Horta, I'm springing this on you. I'm not sure how late um, the meeting will go. I think it is scheduled until six o'clock, um, but I do have to leave a little bit early. Um, so I want to, um, to, to uh, let you know that commissioners uh, are aware that, that I'll be leaving a little bit early. Um, and so with that, we will get underway. Um, I will uh, uh, turn it over. Uh, Chair and Sheffield, you froze. So, uh, oh no, yeah. Where did I freeze? You said, uh, "From here, I will turn." I will turn, and then I froze. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I was keeping you all in suspense. Um, I will turn it over uh, to Shalise, I believe, for um, the beginning of the training. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen.
And if someone could give me a verbal indication that you're able to see my screen, would be great. Yes. yes. What you're seeing on your screen are the current districts that were established 10 years ago after the last census. And the task of um, this commission and of the Board of Supervisors is to redraw the district lines um, for a number of reasons, foremost being equal population balance, and we'll talk about that. And also as the chair um, laid out so well, the, to respect the communities of interest and um, the characteristics of our communities and to provide for um, equitable representation of those communities. So we, I, the first part of the agenda, and um, I'm gonna be covering both their items two and three on the agenda. Not sure, and Chair, I'm not sure that we had um, a roll call, and I don't know if that if we want to pause to take a roll call to know if you have a quorum or not. Yvonne, is that something that's of a concern? This was this uh, training was optional for the for the commission, and it's, it's kind of like a supplemental session. But Chair, I'll defer to you. Okay. Yeah, that's my understanding that this is optional. I I, I did hear from. Um, some commissioners who were not able to attend, it was not uh, mandatory. <laughs> um, and definitely, I, I, I don't see it as something that we needed a quorum for, for, for this training. Right, I just uh, wondered if we did have a quorum and want to make sure we were, we were uh, abiding by the, the Brown Act. Um, uh, but well, I know we did notice it and we'll follow the agenda with public comments nonetheless, so I think yes. we'll be fine. Uh, so uh, moving along, I wanted to, uh, for the first part of the agenda, is talking about the federal and the state rules as they specifically relate to map drawing. So uh, when we're, you're, what you're seeing on your screen is the, uh, the federal laws are on the left-hand side, and we're talking equal population. Equal population means that each of the five districts must have near equal population. So there is allowable, it doesn't have to be exact population but near population means no more than a 10% deviation between um, the uh, highest populated and the least populated district that's drawn in a particular map. We also need to abide by the Federal Voting Rights Act and draw lines in a way that, don't, that, uh, that do not dilute the voting power of our protected class groups. Oftentimes when uh, you're, you're talking about diluting power, the common ways are to either crack uh, a group, meaning if you have a particular concentrated area of a protected class group, you cannot divide it in a way that would um, make it so they have, uh, for example, divided into several districts. So they have really uh, don't have a strong voice in any di single district. Or if you have a very high concentrated area, pack them all in a single district. So they virtually have no voice in any other district. Federal law also requires that we can't draw lines based solely on race. We must consider um, other factors such as shared history, shared culture, um, language spoken at home, shared social networks, um, and shared social concerns. That's the, those are the federal laws. When we're talking to California laws, we need to follow the Fair Maps Act, and that's found in Election Code Section 21500. This uh, act was in an act, became effective January of 2020. So last time when the lines were drawn, uh, this act was not in place. The act requires that we now prioritize criteria when we are drawing the maps. And the first uh, on the list of priority is geographically continuous. So that means each district must have one single solid border. Wherever, and, and all of these are to the extent, the extent practicable. The second is undivided neighborhoods and communities of interest, meaning we keep socioeconomic uh, groups together if they are in a geographically concentrated area, and if they should be kept together for their fair and effective representation. The third criteria is respecting the boundaries of the existing cities and census designated places. That's what CDP stands for. So uh, the, the legislature has requested that that be one of the priorities. It's priority number three, that we look to not dividing cities or census designated places wherever it's possible. 
easily identifiable boundaries, meaning we follow major roadways, streets, um, uh, waterways, natural landmarks, um, anything that you can easily describe the boundary and that the voters can understand the boundaries. Compactness doesn't necessarily mean the size or shape, but it does mean you do not bypass one group of people to get to a more distant group of people. And we can't favor or discriminate against a political party. Once we've met those criteria, there's other traditional principles that the commission and the board of supervisors may consider. And I want to emphasize that, that these, the right-hand column that I'll be uh, addressing now are optional but they are traditional principles that, that are used and been held up in court. One of those is minimizing the number of voters that are shifted to different election years. So present, presently there are um, districts that are assigned to a 2022 election and voters are expecting to be able to vote in 2022 for a board of supervisor. If the lines were changed and, there, and a group of voters is switched to a 2024 24 district, um, that means that they will, it will have been six years since they have had a chance to vote for a supervisor. Future population growth, growth we're, limit, we're limited in this aspect to that 10% deviation. So if we know there's an area that's going to or has known growth, we can possibly underpopulate that district, but only within that 10% boundary. And preserving the core of existing districts is another traditional redistricting principle that could be considered. The law also uh, requires that when we produce maps, we also produce um, data that um, gives a summary of how the districts are comprised. Those categories will be, of course, total population and then citizen voting age population totals, and then the characteristics of the protected class that have high, high enough concentrated um, mathematical numbers to be reflected. So uh, what I'm showing you here is if we took the existing boundaries and we took 20, what, what NDC estimates that final population is going to be, and I do need to um, emphasize that that final population, um, we do have numbers that were uh, given to the state on August 12th, as far as total population. But what is happening now as required by state law is the California statewide database is zeroing, is, uh, zeroing out all the state population prisons to, to, to um, zero and reassigning all those state incar incarcerated persons to their last known home address. They are anticipating that's a six week process in total. We expect to have the final official population numbers that we must use in the state of California for, for every county and every city and every, every jurisdiction. We will have those numbers at the end of September. After, after those numbers are released, there is a three week waiting period to allow the public to analyze those numbers before the county can produce maps or before the county, um, county's consultant can produce maps. Now the law does provide a provision for that three week time period to be reduced to one week. If it's within a certain um, time to the deadline to adopt maps, that deadline to adopt maps for the county is December 15th. All that boils down to is if the state releases their official numbers after September 16th, we're in the one week zone where we have to only wait one week to produce maps. If they release those official numbers before September 16th, then we will have a three week waiting period before we can produce maps. So it's probably, we're all waiting to see when it, when it will happen. The citizen voting age population is important. The citizen voting age population is what um, the Federal Voting Rights Act looks at as far as the strength of your protected class citizens to elect candidates of their choice. And when we're looking at the citizen voting age population, we're looking at the proportions. And it, it's all dependent on the characteristics of the county, obviously. Um, some jurisdictions, some counties have very high, densely concentrated areas of certain protected class citizens, and some don't. 
So you can see by the existing districts that, um, oops, I'm sorry, didn't mean for that. I'm trying to close my screen on the side so I can see my full screen, sorry. You can see, I'm just looking, for example, at the Hispanic citizen voting age population. And these are US citizens who are 18 years of age, meaning they would be eligible to vote. You can see presently with our current districts, um, are the, the highest proportion of the Hispanic citizen voting age population is found in district four at 21%. That's 21% of those citizens, uh, those uh, persons residing in that area that are 18 years of age and US citizens, 21% of them are, uh, of those are Hispanic. When I'm using the word Hispanic or Latino, those two terms are interchangeable as far as the census is concerned. The actual question on the census is, are you Hispanic or Latino? So when we're talking um, those two populations, the, those terms for this pur purposes of redistricting are one and the same. Over in the right-hand column, you'll see the overall citizen voting age population for each of these categories. When you see NH white, that's non-Hispanic white at 75% overall for the, for the county non-Hispanic Black, 2% overall for the county, non-Hispanic Asian American Pacific Islander, 5% overall for the county. And um, if these population counts, and I want to emphasize, these are not going to be the final counts that will be used when we do our final maps, but we will, as I mentioned, we'll, we will, will not have those numbers until the end of September. NDC's estimate is based on the American Community Survey and then adjusted for some known errors as far as, like, as group quarters and some other undercounts that are typical um, with, the, with the American Community Survey. We did get, uh, we do know that, that these, that our NDC estimates for Sonoma County are going to be uh, um, over. The raw numbers that came from the county is, is more in line with um, about 488,863. For now, we are using the NDC provided estimated population. And the reason why we are going forward with the NDC estimated population is because we made the decision to be able to allow the public to start using tools now. So we had to, we had to um, begin with a number to set up the tools now. We, the, all, the, all the tools will be adjusted once the final data is available. Using this estimated data, each of the five districts must contain about 99,954 people. That's the ideal population. On this graph that, that is shown here, uh, you will see that uh, there's a percentage of the estimated deviation from the ideal. Over in the far right-hand column, you'll see a number that is 7.35% under the est estimated percentage deviation. 7.35% is acceptable because it is, it, it is under the 10% deviation. With each of the maps, we will be providing uh, a demographic summary. And this is an example, a close-up example of the demographic summary and the different categories that will be provided for each of the districts. Again, we're using the exist, an example showing the districts as they're drawn today. Those district lines will change, likely. And we're using estimated population. We know that estimated population will change once the official data is available. This is, I, I, because there's so much data on one sheet and know that each map will, be, will have this demographic summary along with it. I've divided into two slides. This is the first slide. And what's shown here is of course the estimated total population. And uh, those are all people um, including babies, U.S. citizens, and non-citizens, all people. And again, with the state prisons zeroed out and the prisoners reassigned to their home locations. 
the citizen voting age population that's been explained, voter registration as of November 2020, voter turnout as of November 2020, and voter turnout as of two years previous in November 2018. All the, the voter turnout information is useful when you're looking, if that's a community of interest where you have a particular area that has lower voter turnout, you'll see a higher percentage, um, you'll see a lower percentage, I'm sorry, in those particular, uh, for those particular districts, and that could be a community of interest. The next page shows some more socio, and it's actually a one page document when you get this, it's essentially page two of the map shows socioeconomic information that's, that comes from the American Community Survey. The American Community Survey is conducted by the Census Bureau. Most of you, uh, many of you will recall years ago when the um, Census Survey would reach your home, you would either get the short form or the long, long form. The Census Bureau has done away with the long form and instead, about one in every 14 households every year receives the American Community Survey, which is an extended survey that asks all types of questions that gives us more information about um, the, particular, uh, the particular household. They even go so far as to ask the number of toilets in one's house or internet access, th that type of information. What we're providing uh, for you are the categories that are used for redistricting. Age is a common category that defines community of interest, immigration status, language spoken at home, language fluency, education levels, the number of children at home, uh, the number of uh, household income and housing status. Additionally, um, this, this, this information can all, each of those categories can also be provided on a thematic map that would show the density of where these areas reside. So just the way that this information is used, for example, is if your focus of a community, in, of community of interest was based on household income, you could look at each of your districts and see if there's a, 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 see which proportions are higher in which particular districts. And that shows you that you have a higher percentage of that particular category in that particular district. Same with housing status. You'll see that the different districts have different uh, percentages of renters um, versus home ownership. Looking to the very bottom line of housing status, you'll see that um, Citywide, the far right, 61% of the um, residents live in homes that are owned. Um, in District 3, we see that it's only 47%. That is an indicator that this policy of community of interest that was uh, is, is more uh, concentrated that renters in District 3 than in the other particular districts. That's an example of how this information can be useful. With the tools that we have, the, the, very, the most robust tool that's available allows you as you're building your maps to look at these various categories. All maps that are submitted, and it doesn't matter in what format they're submitted, you could use a map that you picked up from AAA or a map from the chamber and draw your district. You can use one of our paper maps that, pro that is provided in the toolkits. You can use one of our online tools to submit maps. In whatever format you submit maps, NDC will professionally produce them for public review and they will all look the same. Right now I'm showing you what the existing uh, districts look like, but I, just for consistency and so that all maps are treated equally, they will all be presented in the same format. Likewise, each map will come with this demographic summary. This is the same information that I just showed on the previous slides. It's just that this uh, demonstrates how it's all on one sheet. 
before we move on to the mapping tools, I want to go ahead and stop uh, sharing my screen so we can perhaps ask questions and see if there's any questions about the federal and state criteria for map drawing. And I would um, encourage anyone who has questions, go ahead and use the raise your hand feature on your screen. And Cher, I just want to note that we do have a member of the public who is submitting some questions through chat. So I don't know if um, we want to invite him to raise his hand. If not, I can go ahead and read off um, what's in the chat as well. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I want to first see if there are commissioners who have clarifying questions right now, and then we'll circle to the public um, and perhaps this, uh, um, this member of the public would like to speak. If not, then you know, definitely have the option of reading what he put in the chat. So commissioners at this time, any, any clarifying questions? All right, well, I'm gonna to move to you, Emily, if we want to see if uh, the members of the public would like to speak. Perfect, so he has raised his hand. So let me go ahead and uh, get him set up to speak. Just give me one moment, please. All right, Fred, you should now be able to unmute yourself and ask your questions. Okay, great. Uh, let me get to the chat here. Um, I'm this member of the public. Um, from reading from my chat questions here, uh, I've, I've looked at uh, what the percentage of Latino um, people in Sonoma County is and I've had a figure from my research of 27.3, but the data given on this sheet is 16%. So I have a question about whether there's been a loss or whether that 27.3 is a wrong figure or where that, where that came from. And also with the immigrants of 14% in District 1 population, is that of the total population of District 1, 14% are immigrants and 48% of those are naturalized. Um, and then also, uh, I made a few maps in the interim between this meeting and last meeting, and I didn't have an opportunity to like make any comments on the maps, like what my purpose was or if I made them. And so I think it would be good if uh, people could sign their maps and, and give a little uh, executive summary of what their goals of them were. So uh, those are my questions and comments. Okay, and you you submitted a, you submitted maps through using one of our tools or yes, the di district districter. Um, mm -hmm. I submitted uh, three or four maps. Okay. Oh, one mm -hmm. of them was titled thirty percent Latino. One was twenty nine percent. One was totally gerrymandered. It was uh, Aria Federico. Was that map? And then I did another twenty three percent Latino map. And so I was basing, you know, I was trying to get to 27.3% so that I would get, you know, the full representation um, in those maps, but I didn't have a chance to sign them or anything. A district R is limited in the amount of comments that you can submit, but um, we would encourage you to go ahead and submit your, those comments and relate them to those maps. It would be very helpful. And, and be sure to um, include comments of, of your rationale for drawing the lines, because uh, as you'll recall, lines cannot solely be based on race or ethnicity. So there needs to be other factors for the reason why the lines were drawn in the fashion they were drawn. So Shalise, should he submit his comments to be attached to these through the email address that's on the website? Is that the way that he should, he should communicate um, his rationale, his reasonings for his maps? Yes. Yes, and that, that email, but it, and it, will be on, it is on the last slide, slide, it is on the website. It's redistricting2021 at sonoma-county.org. And Fred, I put that in the chat as well. And regard, regarding the percentage of the immigrants and naturalized, I um, 
I will be getting back to you on um, the exact definition of those categories. So if you um, could submit your, if you're not comfortable with giving the email address in, in the chat here, if you could please submit your email address to that same email, we'll make sure it gets answered and then we will answer it publicly at the next meeting. Making a note here. Um, your question about the, I, I'm sorry, my audio cut out when you were asking about the 27%. I missed that part of the question. If I'm still live, um, I, I did a research uh, that says that, that Sonoma County was 27.3% Hispanic. And I, I got that off of, um, you know, what appeared to be a reputable website. And uh, so I'm just curious if, if now it's, it's gone down to 16% or, or if I found a wrong figure or, or is 16% the number that, that I should be going on. The 16% the that was reflected um, in, in the demographic summary shown referred to the citizen voting age population. So it's two categories, 18 years of age and US citizens, which would be different than the, over total, the overall total population, Hispanic total population. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? Yes, so we do have one from Claudia Norby. And so I just wanna take a moment to see uh, Claudia, if you would like to go ahead and raise your hand and speak, or if not, I can go ahead and just read your, que read your question. So I'll just pause for a moment here. All right, so, so I don't see her raising her hand, so I'm going to go ahead and read her question for her. So Claudia Norby is asking, is it possible for members of the public to view others' maps? It is possible if the member of the public has chosen to share it. So um, all the maps will be viewable after they are produced, but that will not be until after the official data comes out and until um, they're produced and, and, and put online. So you won't be getting that until October. But, but there are two of the tools, the online tools allow members of the public to share maps. One of those is District R and the other is um, Maptitude that we'll be talking about. So if, if a member of the public has chosen to share, yes, she'll be able to see those. Someone asked if the, per, the submitter's name will be associated with the map. We keep a separate file of the names of um, the maps that are, uh, those who submitted the maps. Um, however, each map will be numbered. We want each map to be treated um, objectively and, and fairly um, based on the map's merits, not on the person who submitted. So th there will just be a number associated with it, but do know that if someone were to make a public records request, then, we, then that information would be for provided. Any other questions just about the criteria um, for mapping? I see none from the public at this time. Okay, let's move on to the fun stop then. Let's see. If you have not had a chance to visit the website, um, I would encourage you just to visit the website and click through and read. There's a, uh, the information. It's, there's some excellent information. If you have questions about it, if you have maps to submit, and as I mentioned, if you have comments to, admit, to make about the maps that you submitted through District R or through any of our other tools, um, you can uh, go ahead and send them through this email provided. Quickly, I'm gonna show you what maps, what tools are available, but I'm going to not go into detail at this point because I want to jump over to the website because I think it's important that you learn how to access these tools from the website. We have story map that gives various layers of different types of maps that all relate to the, to the county. The simple review map, uh, and I will be dem demonstrating how this works. This is a great tool. So you can zoom in very closely to see streets and you can overlay various maps. 
a simple map drawing tool that's available that gives population counts if you're not comfortable with using the computer or using any of the, either of the online tools. If you're comfortable with Excel and you've used a paper map, but you want Excel to do the math for you, there's an Excel spreadsheet. I'll be showing you that. And then we have District R, which is new this year, and it's a paintbrush tool, and it's actually pretty fun and easy to use that I will be um, showing to you. And then Maptitude, it's, it's made by Caliper. It's Caliper's Maptitude Online Redistricting. Sometimes it's abbreviated as MOR. I, I usually refer to it as Maptitude. This is the uh, public version of the, of the more powerful version that we use as demographers in drawing the final maps. So for, at this point, I'm going to uh, switch over to, um, to the website because I think it's important you're familiar with the website and are able to answer, uh, to access the tools through the website. The website is sonomacounty.ca.gov slash redistricting. I found that if you do County of Sonoma redistricting, it will bring up the site. Uh, <clears throat> this is the home screen that you uh, land on when you get to, uh, when, you, when you do that sonomacounty.ca.gov slash redistricting. The very first part of the screen just gives some general background of the redistricting process, the fact that it happens every 10 years, um, the fact that it has to be equal populated each of the districts. The Board of Supervisor established a redistricting commission to assist in the process in drawing the lines. We have 19 members representing um, district, uh, each of the districts. We have two from each of the districts and then nine at-large members. And the final maps that um, we asked the public to help us create will define where these, uh, the five supervisorial district borders are. And then only those members that, rely, uh, that reside in that particular district are able to elect one of their own to be county supervisor. <clears throat> There's some really great information. Um, go ahead and watch the video when you get a chance. And there's information, when there's uh, new information, it it's shows up here. We have the flyers about the meeting dates. We have a fact sheet that is, that is interesting to review and then frequently asked questions. And then the draw a map. In drawing the map, before I click into learn more about drawing your map where it gives us the tools, I want to point out this uh, communities of interest worksheet which I think is very, very helpful. I already showed you the demographic summary of the existing districts and you've seen the map of the existing uh, supervisorial districts, but this community of interest worksheet, I'm just gonna quickly jump over to that. That particular document was, is prepared by Common Cause and the term communities of interest is a difficult one to understand. I just wanted to call your attention um, to it Go ahead and spend some time and go through this to help you understand what a community of interest is because it will help you in drawing your maps. You know your communities the best. Um, you can do this worksheet yourself and know uh, and to help you if, define what your community is. There's just some questions to ask about your communities and this will help you guide, um, guide your thoughts in kind of defining what communities are. And then as you get to the map drawing tools, thinking, okay, when I draw this community, I wanna make sure that it's in a, in a single district. So I, just, I think it's just a, a really great tool. Again, that's, that's created by California Common Cause. And it's my understanding they have the same version in Spanish. Back to the website. I'm gonna click on this learn more. This is where we're going to get to the tools. Uh, I've already mentioned how you submit maps and do know that you can submit maps. Um, just take a, a picture of it with your cell phone if you like and submit it. Or uh, again, use one of our tools to submit it electronically. Or you can also mail it into the, the 
Sonoma County District offices and the addresses right here on the screen. There are different tools to meet different levels of um, technical expertise and, and, and whatever your appetite is for using some of the, some of the um, tools. I'm actually going to jump down and I want to show you first this interactive review map. The interactive review map is useful and tied into the paper maps. Um, it also can be useful when you're doing some of the other maps. The other thing about the interactive review map is once maps are submitted and produced by NDC, they'll be populated under the interactive review, review map. I'm gonna go ahead and jump to the interactive review map. Um, you should, uh, can someone give me a verbal acknowledgement if they see the box that says interactive review map instructions on the screen? Yep. Okay, yes. Great. Perfect. When you first open that interactive review map, um, this, this instruction sheet comes up on the screen and it's just going to explain how to navigate around the screen. I'm going to go ahead and, and close it out um, so that uh, you can see the map better. On the left hand side, we have just the common, the plus and the minus zooms in and zooms out to different areas and the home gives you, sends you back to the main page. Whoops, my cursor, sorry. <laughs> I'm using a cursor on a very, uh, uh, my mouse is sliding around a little bit. I just clicked home to get, get us back to that, uh, that first um, screen. Legend uh, is just basically showing what these outlines are. The dotted lines are the current districts. The solid border is actually the county. And the, the red um, outlines that you see on the map here, those are either cities or census designated places. I'm going to activate the layers. And on the right hand side of my screen, the layers menu shows up. And I'm showing here that I have activated the current districts and um, the census, the, the counties, the county line. And there are other features that we can um, activate, including the current districts by color. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that one up there just for a moment. We'll wanna take it off later, but that shows you how you can um, activate different things. If you wanna take off um, the, the census designated places, if you don't like that, then you get a cleaner map. Okay. You can also change your base gallery. Let's take off the colors just for a minute while I demonstrate this. Your base map gallery, you can show either the imagery. Sometimes that's uh, nice when you've zoomed in very closely to a particular area. Zoom in, particular area. You see as you get into the middle of a populated area, you can actually see buildings. And sometimes that's useful if you wanna know where this border goes. You can just click through the various base maps and choose the one that you like the best. Some of them are not, uh, applicable for the county um, streets. This might be taking a minute for it to populate as well. Let's get back to our home here. Topography, streets, I don't know why that one's not activating. It might just be taking a minute. Terrain. That might be useful um, when you know, need to know where mountain ranges are. You can see that it's kind of followed the side of the mountain here. 
the current district. Get back to our original screen. And again, you can just scroll through and choose the view that you like the most. Streets usually shows up. I'm not sure why it's not. The other thing I want to show you is that, um, and this is going to be important for you. Let's get the current districts up here. When we draw maps, we have to follow census geography. The smallest unit of geography we can follow is census blocks. Those are census blocks and you can see they get very, very small. We zoom in closely to some of the populated areas. These are census blocks. The reason why I want to show you census blocks, and if you get even closer, you'll see, oh, that was close enough. You, you can see the population is assigned to each of the census blocks. But I do want to point out that the shapes of the census blocks are not always square. In a very populated kind of residential area, they're more square than not but you can see there are some very odd shaped census blocks. And the reason why I point that out to you is because when you are drawing your maps, you need to know if you've touched, like this is a particularly very large census block. And if you wanted your line to cross over through here and you touch this on a map, it's gonna color in the entire census block. And we have to keep to the census block geography. So sometimes that gets a little frustrating when you're drawing your line and on the map and it doesn't seem to follow where you've drawn the line. It's likely because the census block is, is an odd shaped block. And you can turn to this interactive review map, click on the census blocks and zoom in closely and you can see what those census blocks are. Census tracks are um, similar. We need to get a better base map gallery, I'm not sure um, why streets isn't activating. Hmm. Trying to find. Okay. We'll use this one for now. I'm sorry, it's not. I may need to go out and back in for it to get the better map for us. Oh, that's not going to work either. Okay, I'm clicking back to my layers here. Census tracts are larger groupings of census blocks. So I have right now highlighted census tracts. If I wanna highlight census blocks, you can see it's grouping within those census tracts. I'm gonna un unhighlight the census tracts for now. And what I want to uh, show you is the tool th that goes along with um, centered here on Windsor, the tool that goes along with the, to with the paper tools. And that one is the population units with total population. Because when you're looking at the paper maps, sometimes you can't tell what streets it follows. And so if you bring up this, I'm gonna undo the current districts and bring up the population, total population, you can see that we've uh, created a population unit and giving you the population count for this particular unit so that you can just take your map and this will be more apparent when um, you have your paper map in hand. Get back out. 
This is a electronic version of the paper map kit that we're providing for you. And we've broken out the population units by these red lines and have given you the population counts. The reason why I'm showing you this interactive review map is because when you're doing your paper maps, as I mentioned, sometimes you don't know what streets or what major highways are, have been followed when we've created those population units. Similarly, uh, um, when you're using the Excel spreadsheet, now instead of the population counts, they're all numbered um, numerically. Okay. So that is the um, interactive review map. Once the maps are submitted on layers again, if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that more, um, it will list all the maps. It will say, for, for example, map 101, map 102, map 103, map 104. They were all um, be populated down here. We also have provided some of those thematic maps here for you to see. Again, we mentioned um, renter housing. So you can see in the legend, I'm, I'm not sure the legend's gonna show up here for you. Yes, the legend, once I clicked on legend, these are, are renters by um, uh, proportion of the renters in that particular area. So as you're so showing that in the purple areas, it's zero to 25% of those residents um, rent their homes. When you see the pinks and the yellows and the greens, you'll see that 50% or more of the people in those areas rent their homes. Sometimes that's a good indicator of a community of interest. I'm going back to the base map gallery. <clears throat> I'm sorry, back to my layers. And I can highlight different, um, different socioeconomic categories such as the, per the percent that speak Spanish at home. And again, those lighter, if you want to activate the legend, it will show you the pinks, the yellows, and the uh, greens shows that 50% um, or higher of those communities speak um, Spanish at home. So sometimes this can be used when you're drawing your maps to see, okay, did I do a good job at respecting a community, uh, mostly a community that speaks common language? That's the interactive review map. I'm gonna go back to the website. And now we'll go back up to the um, paper only maps. The county has uh, reformatted the, the paper kit to give some additional instructions, done a particularly nice job with that. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get it open for you. Um, it's a trifold. On the front of the trifold um, gives the information on the um, upcoming dates and what'll be happening at those dates. Um, just general information on redistricting, the guidelines for drawing the maps and other information about, in general, about um, districting. Page two, excuse me just a moment. Page two is the paper map that gives the population of each of the areas. If you did not want to use the computer at all, if you don't want to use Excel, all you need is this map. And what you do is you <coughs> draw your lines and then do the calculations to see how close you are at getting to the roughly 99,954. My apologies. When we get to the Santa Rosa area, it gets very congested. So there's a pop out <coughs> that shows you where these population units are. And again, <coughs> excuse me.
you can always switch over to that interactive review map if you're curious as to what lines we followed or if we followed any major streets in creating these population units. In most cases for the county, <clears throat> these population units have followed census tracts that have been defined by the um, Census Bureau. So that is your paper kit using this, the population counts. You can just use a solid marker or a thick line to draw, draw your borders of where you want these drawn. Now there's something very important <clears throat> that I need to point out. These population units are created by NDC just for the sole purpose of the paper kit. They do not need to guide how you draw the map necessarily. So if you do not like how we drew these population units, you wanna in essence create your own population unit we provided for you on the interactive review map. You can activate the census blocks and it will give you all the census blocks, say for example, in this particular population unit. And you can say, I wanna follow this census block, just draw your line where you want it to be. Give us an idea of what street you followed <clears throat> and just make a notation, draw an arrow, follow the street and do the math from using the census blocks. So or we can do the math for you, but you're probably gonna to wanna to do the map to make sure you're gonna be population balanced. So I do want to emphasize, you do not have to use the boundaries provided here and the population units are just provided for your ease in using a paper map. Because if we were to provide a map that showed each of the tiny little blocks with all their population count, it would be an unusable map as far as in a paper form. So I don't want you to uh, be upset about how the population unit boundaries are. If you don't like them, just follow a street and say, I want to follow this street and have this be part of my district. Okay. <clears throat> I mentioned if you are familiar with Excel spreadsheet, you don't want to do the calculation yourselves and you want to also see how your citizen voting age population per, uh, for each of the protected class categories is adding up, then you can use the other um, supplemental part of this public participation toolkit. I'll show you on the website. <clears throat> we just went over number one. Number two, uh, we've provided a, a similar map that shows the various streets. I'm gonna, let me just go ahead and show you that one as well. This one does give you some of the streets and some of the cities. Again, if you actually wanted to look at the street names, so this more provides the cities in a sense it's designated places. But this um, follows the population units that we created and just uh, gives you uh, the census, the names of the census designated places. So this is a reference map for you. You could draw your lines using this if you want, but it, again, it doesn't have the population um, counts for you. I just wanted to show you that that's available. Going on to this uh, item number two, which are the paper maps that you can use with the Excel spreadsheet. So instead of bringing up your kit that has the population units um, with, with the population counts, you'll be bringing up your kit that has the, the paper map with the population units ID'd it numerically. Let me go ahead and bring that up for you. See, it looks very similar to the other map shown, but they're just numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. You get the idea. The reason why I'm calling out those numbers is say, for example, I wanted a coastal district. And so I decided that I was going to draw my border to be coastal. And maybe this comprised my border. So I would make a note of those numbers and say, I'm going to call this my district number four. This will be district four. <clears throat> I'm going to make note of all of those population unit numbers that are in my district four. And then I'm going to hop over to the Excel spreadsheet. Excel spreadsheet is listed under number two as Excel spreadsheet right here. When you bring up the Excel spreadsheet, 
The first part of the spreadsheet gives you some instructions. <clears throat> Note at the bottom, there are three tabs to this spreadsheet, instructions, assignments, and results. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to assignments. And you can see, uh, <clears throat> let me make this bigger so you can see it. Okay, Shalise, we can't, we can't see your spreadsheet actually. Oh, thank spreadsheet. you. Yeah. I always forget to do that. <laughs> My apologies. Okay, here's the spreadsheet. Um, when you open it up, it opens up, opens up to the instruction uh, sheet. And then at the bottom, I'm clicking over to the assignments sheet. And my population units are just numbered consecutively. And as you recall, I called out those numbers and said I was going to assign them to my district four. So I'm going into the district assignment category and I'm going to start typing in four. You notice the top row two of my spreadsheet. Now my population is starting to add for me. This is not a very populated area. And it will show just with uh, those population units that are numbered through 19, I still am under by 66,000. So I would wanna refer back to my map and identify what other population units would be aligned next to, um, next to these coastal ones. Um, just for sake of doing this exercise, let's say that maybe 26 was, close to, uh, was adjoining those coastal um, population units, maybe 27, maybe population unit number 29. I have no idea. I'm not looking at the map at all. Maybe 35 was. <clears throat> and you can see I'm, I'm pretty close to being um, close to my population. And then let me start building in my district three. So say I've looked and I don't ever do this randomly without referring to the map. Don't do it as I'm doing, but say I, I methodic, I, I very carefully look, drew my district three and now I'm, I noted what population numbers they are and I'm assigning now my district three. You do not need to use this. This is just for those folks who really, uh, wanted to use the paper kit and then are curious to see just how uh, well they did on their math or how well the population um, came out. <clears throat> Let me just, we've we built two districts. Let's go to our results section. So I've not built out the entire uh, district map, but I have, I have built out um, my district three and my district four when I'm looking to see how well I'm doing for population balance, I can see I did pretty well. I'm almost spot on in district two, 0.02% from the ideal. And in district four, I'm only, um, I'm less than 1% away from the ideal. So that's, that's looking pretty good. When I'm looking at see how well I did at <clears throat> respecting the various protected glass protected class categories. I look at the citizen voting age population and say for Hispanic, I see in my district three, I have 19% and in district four, I have 20%. Um, for my African-American population, I have 2% in each of the districts. And for my Asian American uh, Pacific Islander category, I have 4% and 4%. So that will give you an, an indication it also gives you voter registration and um, voter turnout. That's, uh, you don't need to use it. I would not learn Excel if you don't know Excel already. Um, it's not worth learning Excel to do this, but it's kind of a fun worksheet if you've already, if you've drawn a map and just want to see how, how it's come out and you didn't want to use one of the other tools. Let me go back to our <clears throat> website.
So now I've, I've already I've told you about uh, the paper maps, both the paper map on its own, the paper map with the population unit ID numbers and the Excel spreadsheet. <clears throat> Next, I wanna show you District R. Um, some folks pronounce it District R. We're not quite sure uh, <laughs> what the correct pronunciation is, but we've been using District, District R. When you click on that link, it's going to bring you to this starting page. <clears throat> and if you notice, it says tag Sonoma County. That's important. It's going to automatically tag your maps for you as long as, as you have accessed it through this website. If you just um, accessed it through the main districtr.org and then found your way to California and found your way to Sonoma County, you're going to have to remember this tag. So I would encourage you if you're going to use District R to access it through the city's webpage. Can you see my screen now that says tag Sonoma County? It's a verbal yes, someone? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And you can uh, do it a couple of different ways. You can just identify various communities or a community built from census blocks, or you can build up all five supervisorial districts. I typically always go into the five supervisorial districts and actually you don't need to submit a complete map. You can submit um, a partial map if you only know one district or if you wanna use this just to draw a community. So you can choose either one. <clears throat> I don't think it hurts to go into starting out thinking you're gonna build all five and then you maybe just end up drawing one community. It works the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. I wanted to show you what these different tabs, the purposes of these different tabs. Um, <clears throat> the population is given us this ideal population. This number is going to change. This number will change when we get the official California prisoner adjusted data. But for now, it's based on those estimates, the same that I showed you in that demographic summary. Switch over to data layers. You can activate, activate the current supervisorial districts if um, you're planning on using that as your starting point and you'd want to activate the current supervisorial districts. <clears throat> you can uh, bring, uh, show some additional demographics if you like. Um, this first one is the children at home and you can see the darker purple numbers are showing the higher concentrated areas of those uh, particular communities that have children at home. So if that's a community of interest that you want to respect, um, you can have this highlighted as you are drawing your map. Also the various other categories such as high school graduates, those that make over $75,000 a year, uh, college graduates, the percentage of renters, Spanish spoken at home, multifamily residents, other languages spoken at home, and English, and Asian languages spoken at home. So as you just click on them, you can see they will be activated or you can unclick, okay. <clears throat> I'll show you the evaluation after we draw some, some of the districts, but you can change, um, like for example, I'll show you after we've drawn one, but it will show the percentage of citizen voting age population by race. So you can um, show these uh, different categories, the white population compared with the Hispanic slash Latino and the Asian American population. Going back to click on the, I'm gonna activate the population um, feature because that, that one is going to help me when I draw my districts. And I can, um, just zoom in more closely if I'd like, but for now, let's, let's stick with um, trying to replicate what we did as far as um, kind of having a coastal um, district, if that is your desire. And again, I, there's no reasoning to why I'm drawing maps the way, it's just for demonstration purpose. There's absolutely, um, it's just for demonstration purpose. I'm going to activate the first color of the first district I want is blue. It's already selected for me. 
and I can select the paintbrush size. So we probably want, you know, we'll let it go with the default size. You can get smaller once you want to fine tune you know, or larger. And it's going to select by district block. So I just start coloring um, in my districts. I'm just holding down the cursor as I'm moving my mouse and just coloring in these districts. And you're seeing the population is growing as I'm coloring in these areas. Now, as we learned, it's not very populated until we start getting over into some of these more heavily populated areas. So I'm going to <clears throat> zoom in a little bit more closely and say that I want to include uh, Sebastopol in my district. This hand feature allows me to reposition the map. I've selected the hand feature. I'm just going to re reposition it just a little bit and maybe fine tune my paintbrush just a little bit smaller so I'm not picking up too much. And perhaps we decide that uh, Sebastopol goes with this district. So let's try to get some of these. So the population is growing a little bit more. These areas down here. <clears throat> so I'm closer to Lisa, Yes. I'm just going to stop and interrupt you really quick. Um, I, as I mentioned before, I, I do have to cut out a little bit early, and I am going to. Um, turn the meeting over to to Vice Chair Horta um, uh, for the rest of the, the rest of the meeting. So I want to thank you and thank everybody again, um, and looking forward to seeing you all soon. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> um, we still have more to add to this district, but I want you to get the idea. Get back. Sometimes you'll have very large districts. Um, let's go ahead and draw a second district and pick up, <clears throat> see how we're doing up here. I want to lock my um, the already drawn district so it's not going to mess up the one I just did. Maybe increase my paintbrush so that you respect your time here. <laughs> this is a very crude way to draw maps, but once we get to Santa Barbara, we're going to start picking up a lot of populations. We need, I mean, Santa Rosa. Oh, I went too far. I can click my eraser and um, fine tune and just erase some. That's a really quick demo on, on how you would color. Of course, when you want to get into Santa Rosa area, you definitely would want to get closer and use a finer brush because all of Santa Rosa if you were to include it in a district, it's going to be too large. So perhaps you want to just stay to one side. You can see how it's very rapidly getting towards our ideal here. That's a quick demo. Spend your time, know that you can use the erase feature to take areas out that you do not want in there. Once you're done, you click on save. If you're still working on it, you can click work in progress. You can copy this URL and then just simply cut and paste the URL into a browser. It will bring you back to this page. As, as uh, was mentioned, um, by Mr. I, I, don't, I think it's Fallback. Um, he gave his name. Uh, he gave his names a team plan, and I was um, I was happy to hear that he gave them kind of an identifier. I think he said one was thirty percent Latino, one was twenty nine percent 
that that's that's helpful if it stands out and it kind of gives us an, a clue of, of to how you submitted it um, or why you why you drew the map the way you drew it. But again, this tool doesn't allow you to provide comments. So go in um, to send an email, say I, I submitted this plan. It's called this name, and here are my comments related to this map. This is a very easy to use map on. Uh, use tool for the public to use and that's what it's intended for is to not be too intimidating and use the paintbrush tool but um, <clears throat> it, it does have its limitations and again this is already tagged for you so it's going to show up when um, the district art team collects all the maps they'll collect all of those that have the tag Sonoma County and submit them to NDC and we'll produce them in professional map form. I'm not going to submit this today. I'm not even going to save it as a work in progress. I'm just going to go ahead and exit out because we um, you know it's just a junk map. But I wanted to give you an idea of, of how to use this tool. Let's go to evaluation. <clears throat> evaluation is um, giving us the percentage percent, as I mentioned, it's the default for us is to compare the white population with Hispanic and Asian population. And you can see that for, and this is again, citizen voting age population. You can see that the percentages for the Hispanic community is at, um, for my district two is at 19% and my district three is at 25%. And that, uh, that is district R. And then we'll get to our last map drawing tool, which is the Caliper Maptitude Online. When you first go in, I'll ask you to be create as a new user. It will send you an email to um, verify that it's a valid email address that you, when you fill out the very short questionnaire, let me just show you the short questionnaire. So it's very, um, very simple. You're just put, put, basically putting in your name, it's a single name, a password, confirm your password and an email address and basically say you're not a robot and create the user. And then it sends you a link to your email address to activate it. Go back because I already have an account. I'm gonna go ahead and log in. Let me delete this plan. <clears throat> when you... First, get in here, get open this up. If you have not created any of your own plans, see this as my plans, it will be blank like this. And you're going to create a new plan to get started. So you wanna follow those instructions, you'll go to new plan. You won't be opening because you have nothing to open yet. You don't have any plans. You'll be creating a new plan. When you're creating a new plan, you can either start with an outline of the existing districts or you can start with a blank map. So in, in keeping with our theme, we'll go ahead and start with a blank map and I'm going to create it. It's going to ask me to give it a name and I'll just give it a name, my blank map, and I gave it today's date. <clears throat> and then the tool opens. The tool is the outline of the county. And then you can see that this, uh, the cities are highlighted um, or outlined. Just show you if you activate, if you click on the help feature up here, there's a tutorial, a quick start guide that will walk through you through all of the features of Maptitude and show you what all of the different categories are for and how you use them. I'm going to unclick help so that we have a bigger screen. Likewise, the tips will walk you through, um, through the different uh, features. So this shows you, you can select your language. The next tip will show you how the toolbox uh, is, the toolbox allows you to create new districts. The next tool, it just hops around the screen and gives you tips for every one of the, uh, for navigating through the, the, through the entire thing, which is 
kind of uh, interesting. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and close this. So that was tips, help and tips. Um, you navigate around similar to District R, except for with the plus sign, what it wants you to do is actually draw a rectangle around the areas that you want to zoom in. So I'm gonna move for it, uh, where I want to zoom in. I'm gonna uh, click my cursor, click and drag. And this area will be zoomed. Okay. The hand feature, which is the hand, allows you to move around. Similarly, the um, zoom out feature works the same way. Okay. And then the, the uh, let me show you options feature. The options feature, you can set up your map to show different themes. You can show again, renters. You can show college graduates, uh, Latino citizen voting age population. It's hard to see, but the, um, <clears throat> the legend is here showing you that or the greens, it's the greens, the yellows, and the pinks, 50% or more of those areas are a Latino citizen voting age population, our Black and African American citizen population. And we see that mathematically the numbers are so small, we're not seeing it reflected in the percentages here on the map. Going back to none. <clears throat> the one thing I, I like to see is you can uh, highlight the current districts. Let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. Once you draw the districts, if you, if you select district ID, it will color them in. It will color them in. For the different layers, you can choose which different layers. Are, these are grayed out. So it's always going to show you the block, the block place, um, <clears throat> the block groups by place. What that means is um, block group by place is a census designated place. So a block group is, is a grouping of blocks. It's, it's, a, it's another geographical boundary defined by the Census Bureau. And you can um, use the tool just to say, okay, I wanna get, I don't wanna go as small as blocks because that's gonna take me forever to select blocks, but I'll select block groups, but I wanna stay within a certain designated, a census designated place or city so I don't go outside the city boundaries. Similarly, you can do that with tracks. Census tracks are larger than block groups. Census tracks make more sense than census blocks because they actually do try to follow um, tracks or subdivisions, what you think are, are, are tracks. And again, staying within a particular place. So for example, if I, when I'm drawing my map and I'm using, and I'll show you how you, how you select the track by place, um, it would stay within whatever particular um, either city or census, census designated place I'm in. But you can also go through and you can click the various things that are showing up right now. Census designated places are showing, showing up as well as cities and towns, the entire county and then water areas are activated. So do the water areas, then the map will change. You can activate the water areas will show up. Okay, that's a shows you what the layers are. Oops. I scrolled back. Didn't want to make it, didn't mean to make it so small here. There we go. Sorry. <clears throat> and then um, as I mentioned, you can activate the different categories. When you're drawing close, you might want to activate, say I, you want to do uh, respect a, a particular, one of these particular types of communities, you can have that theme activated. And that is the um, options tab. Uh, here is the tool, toolbox tab, and this is what you're going to use to draw districts. And I'm going to demonstrate how this works. As you're drawing, it will show you what the population is of what you've drawn. 
uh, what the estimated population, and if you're changing a district, it will show you what the change of that particular district is. And then over here, you can get a running total of your estimated population, the deviation from the ideal the, uh, by number and the deviation from the ideal by percentage. It will also give you the citizen voting age, the total and the percentage of the total. And then for each of the uh, categories for our protected class groups, this is our citizen voting age population for our Latino community by total number and percentage. Right now, this is showing overall because I don't have any districts drawn and then you can keep scrolling, right? And we'll give you all the various categories as you just continue to scroll. And this is this will be more uh, useful after we've drawn districts, after you've drawn your districts. So to draw a district, I'm gonna go ahead and pan. Let's get to back to our same area that we were kind of working with before. So we have a new district. We don't have any districts created yet. So we'll, it will be a new district. And the source we wanna use, everything that's available on the map because we don't have any districts drawn yet. And then we're going to choose how we are going to select. Now, when we are in unincorporated areas and we're not near cities, we don't want to um, have a track by place because if I click on an unincorporated area, it's going to sense that the place that I'm interested in is all the unincorporated areas in all of the county and it will highlight everything. Sorry, my cursor. <clears throat> so I want to just choose by block for this purpose. And I'll show you, um, I'll do this, this one first by block, and then I'll show you when it would be useful to activate the other features. There are a number of ways that now you can start drawing your map. So I'm drawing a new district. I'm using everything that's available. So everything that's available, I don't have, don't have any districts drawn. You'll see how that becomes relevant once I have districts drawn. I'm going to select by block and I'm gonna use the pointer, which is just going to select single blocks. You can see this could take a very long time if you just did single blocks at a time. You would really only wanna use this feature once you're fine tuning a map because it will take you forever, okay? Instead, um, you can use this circular feature and draw a circle around a particular area. Oops. Why is it saying my, my session has expired? I mean, did you go back out? I was, I had it open earlier. Let me go back out. I'm going to leave this map because I'm getting an error message that says my section has expired. Let me go back to the web page. <clears throat> We're going to navigate just back to it. I think I've lost my web page too. See, I just typed in County of Sonoma redistricting. I'm at my web, at, at the redistricting page. Scrolling down, this is a good review. I'm scrolling down to draw a map. Learn more. Continue to scroll down. Tools for drawing maps. My map two. I've already set up as a user. I'm going to log in. I didn't save my map, but let's see if it comes up for me. We didn't really didn't draw any districts. Okay, let's um, get into drawing district so that I can see the top part of my, the map. I used the pan feature that was activated and moved it. I'm gonna create a new district, use the entire source, and I'm gonna, going to um, use the circular feature that I told you. This one is usually not, not used very often, but. You can see that we get everything within the circle. Oh, this is what I meant. <laughs> Pay attention to your selection. 
because what has been what the selection category is in the county select the place of the first thing I touched. So what you're seeing on the screen is it thought I wanted to, um, in this case, the place is all the unincorporated areas or the non-census designated places. So you can see it virtually selected all of my map. So that's very important that you want to make sure that uh, you have the right category selected. Let's X, the X out, get rid of that, change my category this time to block. I will show you again when it's useful to use those other categories. The circle feature based on block. Now, when I draw my circle, it's just gonna get those areas I've touched. So it's, I have talked to other demographers, I ask when they've used it, all the answer is, oh, I don't use that feature. <laughs> Instead, use, they most use the free form to draw your own shape. I'm gonna select free form. I'm gonna make sure my selection is at the block level again. I'm gonna pan to move so I can see the top part of my district. And I'm going to uh, just start Click, I click, select, sorry, select the free form, click, start drawing my line. Every census block that I touch will go, we'll go ahead and pick up Sebastian. I click every time I want to change direction. Go ahead and get these guys. Then I double click to close it. So now I've drawn one district. I'm going to open up this changes tab to see how well I did with the population. So it shows that the estimated population of my new district is 55,960. So I am short by a, a, quite a number of, of people. So I will have to go back and add to it, but say I was close, I'm going to go ahead and Say this, I like this district. Let's go ahead and assign this district a number. I'm going to click the check mark. It's asking what I want to call it. Um, tip here, just give it a name. And actually, because this is another good tip, this particular district, this upper um, northwest district, is called the fifth district. So let's call this number five. It will be to your advantage. If you try to follow the existing map where they've numbered it, because when we're talking, everyone will use different numbering systems. Some will call this one, two, three, four, five. But if you use pretty close to how the existing map is, it's going to be easier when the commission is analyzing different maps because you'll be talking the same terms. Okay, so this one, let's call this District 5. You don't need to give it a longer name. And I don't give it a longer name other than a number here. Um, it's best if you just number them consecutively one through five. You can give it a name, but it will end up going and renumbering it for you if you've given it a name so that all the maps are consistent. Okay, in green now, it shows this is my district five. This percentage is showing me actually you're under 44%. You're 44% under from the ideal population, but we're gonna go with this for now. And, um, and that one is done. Let's start drawing our district four, which will be over here. So now um, my new target is gonna be a new district. I haven't named it yet. You name it after you draw it. And my source, I don't wanna mess with what I've done for district five. So now I'm going to just, um, my source will just be all the unassigned area. That way I don't need to worry about my border. I've already, already done for district five. <clears throat> The red is telling me you have you can select from any area in the red because you selected unassigned. Um, your target is going to go um, into a new district as we have here. So let's uh, use our tool here and let's start drawing. Let's see here. It doesn't matter if I go into my other district because I told it not to um, 
use anything from that district. Let's just go over here. It's thinking. Okay. It's saying my new district is 76. It's under by, oh, 23%. I need more people to add to that district. So um, let's go ahead and add some more. I'm going to get do my Zoom feature so I can kind of see these borders a little bit better. Okay, say I do want to start to pick up um, some area of Santa Rosa to go into this district. So again, I want to switch to block, make sure you've always, that will, that will change on you. Make sure you're at block level. And I can still use my free form if I want. And just perhaps, let's make this line. Let's cut it, this, this is likely too many people, but make this a pretty shape here. And I come down and see how um, well I've done. Now my new is over. So I can do control, hold down the control key and just select census blocks to take out if I want, but that will probably take a good deal of time. I can do a free form and hold down the control key. So control, holding control will take it out. And there I'm now at 13% close uh, within the ideal. You can see there's some areas that were missed here and I'm not sure why they were missed, but let's try to pick them up. Oops. That one. Pick up all of these that were missed. We still need to add more. You get the idea. You can either add by block or you can add free form. Um, let's go ahead and let's add just a little bit more. So just, we're just a little bit closer here. And again, we picked up too many. <laughs> so I could, I could control. Control, hold down the control key, do the same thing and take some sections out. Still over, this is, a, this, is this area is our problem child right here. Closer. Let's say that's good enough for now. We're going to head and create a new district. Oh, we're going to check mark, say we're done. This, this district we're gonna call it four. I'm calling it four because I'm looking at the existing map and that's kind of where the existing four is. Okay. Remember, recall how I, and I'm gonna click this, uh, display the initial map so you can see we have now two districts that are drawn. I'm going to go ahead and get out of this um, particular selection. And then as you recall in this options, my theme, I want my districts that I've drawn colored in. I'm gonna change this to district ID and it will color in the districts that I have. I, I think it's just kind of easier to see your districts as they're colored. Now I promised you to, to show you how, when you would, when there'd be a case when you wouldn't use block. And as you requ recall, one of the criteria is to keep, um, keep census designated places or cities intact as much as possible. So one way you could do that, I'm going to zoom in close to, let's zoom in to Roanoke Park.
and say I wanted to have Rohnert Park be in one particular um, district. So I'm going to go ahead and change it and select the entire place. So this is a county place, meaning a county city or county designated place. And if I activate that, whenever I touch anywhere within Rohnert Park, it's going to activate the entire Rohnert Park um, boundary. Again, I don't wanna um, mess up with the existing districts that I have. So I'm just gonna only choose from unassigned areas. This is going to be a new district and change this back to place. This case, I just use the pointer because again, wherever I point is going to highlight all of Rona Park. So that has highlighted the entire boundaries of, of Rona Park and I'm under, so maybe we pick up Kotati. Should be right here. Still under, and perhaps I want to see, I, I know that it's not gonna work out, but just for example, could I put Petaluma in with these two? I would, I'm using the pan feature to kind of get down where I can see Petaluma. Say, okay, well, let's see if I could put Petaluma in here. I'm gonna be 11% over. And we also know that I need to connect those two. Use the pan feature. I can't have them two, I can't have them separated. So then I would use change the block, do my free form. I'm, a, I'm, I'm pretending we're not over in population. Say I wanna follow this side of, of 101 to connect. Go maybe follow this railroad. That's how I'm gonna connect these two. I look over here, I'm over by 13%. So what this is tell, telling me, I can't have all of Petaluma, I can't have all of Rona Park, and I can't have all of Gotati in a single district. So something's gotta give. So I could shave off you know, some parts, but again, it would have to be a contiguous district. But that is a, an explanation of how you would um, use this feature to um, build just based on a, a, a whole complete city or a whole complete census designated place. Now say, I, I know I need to shave off some, so let me activate the um, block group place. So block groups again are bigger than blocks. And I'm going to do, um, still activate the pointer, but it's gonna pick up a whole block group place. I'm gonna do the control feature and maybe we take off, um, I'm gonna do control and maybe take off some of this area over here. Oops, control. See if I can get closer to being population balanced by just taking off some of that. Now I'm at 10.4, that's still not great, but a little bit closer, let's maybe shave off this area right here. It's probably gonna be too much, but. 8.8%, we wanna get actually closer to, than that. You can see how that is helpful. And again, to remove, remove um, populations, I'm doing the Sorry, I know that's driving, it's driving me nuts when that pans around like that. It's just a function of my mouse. I'm sorry about that. I'm doing holding the control key down to unselect. I want to make sure I'm at the, um, we're doing block group place. 
I think if I take off here, it's going to be too much. Oh, okay, that's pretty good. So now we're 5.9% from, from the ideal. And let's go ahead and create this district. And perhaps we call this district three. New district. Oh, I'm sorry, do a check mark. District three. Okay. Um, you, you see it's not colored in, it's because I have targets selected. So I'm gonna just change this back to new. It will color it in. I'm going back to see my original. You can see I have my maps drawn. I have, I have three districts drawn. Let's look, let's show, let's look and see how the districts are coming out. So I have drawn districts five, districts four and districts three. I am, I know a district five was underpopulated. So I'm probably likely gonna have to bring district five over and pick some, some up of Santa Rosa. I am overpopulated in district four. So I'm probably gonna have to um, bring, get rid of some of Santa Rosa over here. Um, district three, I'm pretty close at 5.9. That's not bad. And then I can scroll over as I mentioned and look at all of the other data. For my uh, citizen voting age population percentage for Latino, I can see that my highest district is my district four at 19.5%. Okay. Once you're done and you have your entire um, districts all built out, you can do a plan integrity and have it find unassigned areas. There's going to be a, 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 too many of them but you can actually just click on one of them and zoom in and it will show you where it is and it will actually give you suggestions on where it should go. You can also find non-contiguous districts to show you the areas that are non-contiguous. Of course, because we haven't built out this entire map, many are gonna show up. That, and then once you're ready to submit, you can either do, do one of two, once your map is done, you can share it and share it just um, has it show up on the list of uh, templates for others to use. So in addition to blank map or in addition to the existing district map, there would be pe when people share maps, there'll be their maps listed. You can share and never submit a map or you can submit a map and never share it. Or you can do both. Submitting the plan gives you the opportunity to write comments. It's saying you are out of deviation. <laughs> You're not population balanced. Your plan is, um, it needs more work as we know. So once you're ready to submit and your plan is completely drawn out, um, you can submit it, okay? But this plan is too far out to be submitted. So that completes that. Um, there's just one, oh, um, was there other questions? Did I hear a question? We have several questions in the chat from the public. Okay, and we're but getting first, uh, close to our time, so. Yes, but first I wanna ask the commissioners if they have any questions. The commissioners have any questions? I don't see any, so then I guess we can move to the public. And the public, if you wanna read your, um, raise your hand if you wanna make the comment. If you have put the comment in the questions, you can also read it or we can read it if you don't want to make it, so. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so at this time, um, I know Fred Alibach uh, had a number of comments and questions and looks like he raised his hand. So I'll go ahead and uh, bring him back on. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, Fred, you should be up. So you just need to unmute yourself. Thank you. Um, I'd be happy to have my questions and comments answered by email. I put my email in the, in the uh, chat, but I do have one question now is that it seems like the Maptitude is awfully labyrinthine, but maybe it has more layers. So uh, is there any uh, uh, advantage to using Maptitude over District R? And, and uh, please answer my questions by email if you can. Thank you.
Yeah, I, I, I just a, a quick answer is you can get more data on your districts that are drawn. And uh, there's a little bit more, you have a little bit more options of how to population balance your districts. It's, it's, it's just really your preference. District R is pretty powerful, uh, but it only gives the citizen voting age population. It doesn't give all the other categories. If you're looking at other categories to um, see how well you've done it, find in a particular community of interest. And Fred, I still do have you up. I know you did have some questions about like communities of interest um, and things like that. So if you'd like to ask those now, that would be a great time. Um, but if you sure. prefer that we just answer those via email, we can do that as well. Sure. I, I'm, um, you know, at the beginning, you know, I made a, 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 a Latino district. And so media is like, oh, you can't make a district based on race. But it's, it's well known that, um, that Latino also tracks with other community of interest categories in Sonoma County, um, particularly uh, lower income, education, et cetera. So um, I think it would be very easy for, for the maps that I've submitted to have multiple categories and not be seen as a race only because um, as a proxy for class here in, in Sonoma County in, in many respects. So that was just more of a comment than a question. But that's all for now, thanks. Perfect, all right, so at this time, um, I am going to make uh, another call. I know we still have some attendees on the line. Again, if you would like to make a comment or ask a question live, please go ahead and raise your hand and I can go ahead and um, get you going with your camera and your uh, audio. So I'll just pause here for a second to see if anyone else would like to take advantage of that. All right, so Vice Chair, um, I am not seeing any additional hands raised at this time. Then we can move on to the next agenda item, which is public comments on matters that are not on the agenda. All right, so again, if any member of the public would like to make any comments on matters not on the agenda, and actually Fred did raise his hand again, so let me go ahead and uh, get him back up and running. All right, Fred, so you should be able to go ahead and unmute yourself. Thank you. I guess you can tell I'm the guy who always sat in the front row of the class. Um, I, have, I, I looked at the District R and I worked this information over fairly heavily in between the last meeting. And so, you know, in terms of, of equity, um, and I don't think this is on the agenda today, and, and I'm mostly concerned with the first district and the uh, community of interest that I've identified that I'll just call the Springs, which goes um, from um, Boys Hot Springs and West Sonoma, El Verano, Fetters Hot Springs, Agua Caliente to Madrone Road, there doesn't seem to be any way that that um, that there there can be any equity in in district one because those those people aren't going to get any be any more represented than they are already. So I don't know. I just seem to kind of strike out by trying to uh, give more voting power to that particular block. You know, I can identify it all night long but it still ends up being a minority in an ocean of white people. So I just don't see how the equity and voting rights is gonna happen through this process. So actually my comment is that I don't see that, that there's gonna be equity in the first district as a result of this process. It will have to be from something else than redistricting for uh, district one and uh, the Springs community of interest. Thank you. All right, thank you, Fred. Um, again, I'm gonna give uh, the group or the attendees a, just a little bit more time here, see if they have any questions, if they'd like to go ahead and uh, raise their hand. And I am not seeing anyone else raise their hand at this time. All right, so then I'm going to move to item number five on the agenda, which um, is the upcoming meetings. 
we are having an upcoming meeting on September 13, and it's on equity. So um, that it will be a public meeting and it's at 4 p.m. on September 13. The next meeting will be September 15, a virtual town hall meeting um, between 4 and 5 p.m. And then on October 5th, we have a board of supervisors hearing at 8.30 in the morning. I don't know if anybody has a question about that or... And yes, Peter? Yeah, it's not, <clears throat> not really a question, but I just wanted to let you all know. Um, uh, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to make uh, a couple meetings, those two meetings in particular in September. Uh, I'm gonna be out of the country. So um, just my apologies and, and uh, you know, sorry. Thank you for letting us know, Commissioner Rumble. Anybody else? And if there are no comments or no more any questions, um, anybody wants to make a motion to uh, adjourn the meeting? Karen, you make the motion. Does anybody yes, take I make second? a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Thank you. Uh, and so therefore we adjourn the meeting. Thank you, everybody, and I hope to see everyone on September uh, 13, those that can join us. Thank you.